Hello everyone. Welcome to our 2016 Trends in Terminal Emulation webinar. My name is Yvonne Wheaton and I'll be your moderator today. I represent Software Diversified Services. During our webcast today, you're welcome to send us questions. We'll be holding a Q&A session at the end. If you have any questions during our presentation, just place them in your question box. After this presentation, you're welcome to send us questions at any time. Send them to info at sdsusa.com, or you can call us at 1-800-443-6183. Okay, let's get started. Software Diversified Services, or SDS, has been providing mainframe solutions to the market for over 34 years. We have over 1,000 licensed customers worldwide, including global 500 companies. Our headquarters are located in Minneapolis, Minnesota. SDS now supports over 20 ZOS, MVS, VSE, and VM mainframe systems products. Our flagship products are dedicated to network management, security solutions, and performance solutions. SDS is a leading provider of enterprise infrastructure software for multiple platforms with a 34-year history of delivering award-winning support and customer-centric IT infrastructure solutions. Over the years, We've developed more solutions for the distributed environment. We've added to our mainframe portfolio and we've partnered with key subject matter experts for excellent software solutions. Our development staff is continually providing rich, robust updates and enhancements to our products. SDS has strived to bring software solutions to the marketplace that provide both cost savings while still using elegant and state-of-the-art functionality. We're pleased to be presenting today's webcast with our partner, CISPRTEC, whom we have various product offerings in the Vertel web suite. Here's our agenda for the next 50 minutes or so. I'd like to introduce you to our speakers. Bob Thomas is the CEO and founder of Enterprise Systems Media and the publisher of the Enterprise Executive and Enterprise Tech Journal magazines. For over 30 years, Enterprise Systems Media Inc. has been serving the information needs of IT professionals at Fortune 500 size enterprises throughout the world. Bob will be sharing the results from the Enterprise Systems Media 2016 Application Access Survey. Patrick Fonier has an extensive background in enterprise modernization services. He currently serves as a solution architect for the Vertel Web Suite, which is published by CISPRTEC. Patrick will be introducing you to CISPRTEC Vertel Web Access and will be discussing security exposures, Java limitations, and current BYOD issues. His solutions are critical in today's emulation environment using the Vertel Web Access product. John Bakioki from CISPRTEC has been in the mainframe system software industry since 1977. His main focus is extending legacy applications by providing web access, modernization, integration solutions that leverage these applications. John will be providing a demo for VWA so you can see the CISPRTEC solution in action. And remember, we'll be providing a Q&A period at the end. So without further ado, I'd like to turn this presentation over to Bob Thomas. Bob? Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. We recently conducted the 2016 Mainframe Application Access Survey to gain insight into the current world of 3270 terminal emulation. I would like to present some of the findings from this survey to you. As you can see, there are many 3270 terminal emulation products in use today. When we asked our readers how many users access host applications through 3270 terminal emulation, 14.1% said they have over 10,000 users accessing host applications via 3270 terminal emulation. 6.7% said they have 5,001 to 10,000 users accessing host applications through 3270 terminal emulation. That means 20.8% of our readers have 5,001 or more users accessing host applications through 3270 terminal emulation, which is very significant. In talking with the folks at Software Diversified about this statistic before the webinar today, they told me that they have customers using their 3270 terminal emulation solution with as few as a few hundred users to well over 10,000. Obviously, this is an important tool for companies with mainframes. Many readers use their 3270 terminal emulation solution to access other tools such as VPN, FTP, Session Manager, and others, in addition to their host applications. As you are probably aware, 
Some, if not all, traditional 3270 terminal emulation solutions are reliant on distributed Java applets, which are a significant security exposure. So if you are currently using a 3270 terminal emulation solution and have distributed users who don't promptly install Java applets, maintain their antivirus software, and click on almost anything on the internet, beware. On the other hand, thin client browser-based 3270 terminal emulation is more secure than any TN 3270 client-based terminal emulation. Since we suspected many readers use their 3270 terminal emulation solutions to access sensitive applications or tools, we asked them how they secure their 3270 terminal emulation sessions. As you can see, the use of VPN is the highest with a single sign-on IP address control and end-to-end -end encrypted HTTPS connections being a distant second. When we asked readers about several functionality pain points with their 3270 terminal emulation solutions, some readers expressed pain with being forced to pay a high price for product functions they don't need or use, functions they would like to use that are not supported, and difficulty in customizing existing functions to their needs. We wanted to see how long companies had been using their current 3270 terminal emulation solution. Over 47% of our readers have used their current 3270 terminal emulation solution for over 11 years. 23.9% have used their 3270 terminal emulation solution for over 15 years. I suspect that if we had included an over 20 years option in this question, the percentage of readers using their 3270 terminal emulation that long would have been quite high. However, can these companies support the use of BYOD and other new technologies being brought into the workplace with the 3270 terminal emulation solution they have used for so long? We saw earlier in the functionality pain points that some users were experiencing pain points in various areas, but most of our readers did not experience that much pain with various functionalities. However, look what happens when we ask what they need. 88.9% need lower software fees on a per seat basis. 88.8% need lower TCO. And 66.6% .6 need to find a vendor that is easier to work with. Substantial savings can be realized by switching to a different 3270 terminal emulation vendor. And some actually want to earn your business by being easy to work with. In talking about this question with SDS before the webinar today, they mentioned to me that their solution has saved some customers up to 80%. That is definitely a substantial savings, which many readers are interested in achieving. The last piece of information from our survey that I want to relate to you today are currently in progress organization-wide management-sponsored initiatives that impact 3270 terminal emulation. The key question you have to answer is, do your current 3270 terminal emulation solutions support these types of new initiatives and do so at an acceptable cost. Thank you very much for your time. I enjoyed visiting with you today. Thank you, Bob, for the interesting survey results. I'll now hand the presentation over to Patrick Fonnier and John Bakayoki from CISPRTEC. Patrick? Thank you, Yvonne. My name is Patrick Fournier. I am a solution architect for Viertel Web Suite which is published by CISPROTEC Communication. Uh, Viertel is a web-enabling middleware for legacy mainframe applications, applications like CICS, IMS, TSO, Natural, and even Batch. This presentation will focus on Viertel Web Access, which is Viertel's default configuration. This is what you get initially when you install Viertel. So let's start by discussing what is Viertel Web Access and what does it do. Viertel Web Access is a thin client browser-based 3270 terminal emulator. It serves 3270 screens as HTML JavaScript pages with 3270 terminal emulation ergonomics to thin client devices straight off the mainframe without middle tier servers. It's a modernization alternative for client and server-based terminal emulators such as Attachmate, Picom, Roomba, and Bluezone. 
but a picture is worth a thousand words. So let's have my colleague uh, John Bakiaki demonstrate what virtual web access looks like. John, please go ahead. Thank you, Patrick. The first page that Virtel Web Access serves to users that successfully underwent their logon authentication is the Virtel application selection menu. On that menu, only those applications that the user is authorized to access are listed. Applications that the user is not authorized to access are not listed. Among the applications that are listed, those that are started and available are identified with a green light and those that are not available are identified with a red light. This application menu, together with the multi-windows capability of web browsers, works as a simple session manager. Some of our customers have dropped their session manager. By doing so, they have eliminated the session manager's licensing and support costs, which can be quite high. But the existing session manager can also be retained and either listed in the Virtel application selection menu as one of the authorized applications or accessed directly at logon in lieu of the Virtel application selection menu. Now let's see what a 3270 terminal emulation page served by Virtel Web Access to a PC workstation with physical keyboard looks like. As you can see, this page has a traditional 3270 screen layout, colors, and ergonomics. Virtel Web Access supports Mod 2, Mod 3, Mod 4, and Mod 5 screen configurations right out of the box. Other configurations can be supported with some customization. In addition, a virtual keyboard is served to tablets and other mobile devices that do not have a physical keyboard. As with any 3270 terminal emulator, users enter the application code exactly as the 3270 application expects them in the screen fields. And move from field to field with the tab key. Screen to screen navigation still relies on function keys. For example, PF8 to page down, PF7 to page up, and so on. A toolbar is displayed on the top of the screen. It provides access to the following tools. First, a virtual keyboard, which you can use in lieu of the actual keys on your keyboard. A copy, cut, and paste tool which allows you to copy text from your screen and paste it to a different spot in the, the file that you are editing. A tool to print screens and delete screen prints. A settings dialog that allows you to change the 3270 emulation setup by reassigning function keys such as enter or clear or to change the font and font size of the emulation display. There's also a macro tool that allows you to record and play macros. Finally, there is a help button and a disconnect button. Users instantly retrieve the familiar look and feel of the traditional 3270 terminal emulator that they have been using for years. I will now turn the presentation back to Patrick who will describe how Virta Web Access works. Patrick, it's all yours. Thank you for this demo, John. Uh, I hope it helped uh, everyone understand what Virtual Web Access looks like. Now, let's compare the architecture of Virtual Web Access to that of traditional terminal emulators. 
Most terminal emulators rely on a client-based architecture with two tiers, the client and the host, an end-to-end -end TN3270 connection, a client-hosted applet oftentimes coded in Java. Those terminal emulators that don't rely on a client-based architecture rely on a server-based architecture with three tiers, the client, the host, and a middle-tier server, a TN3270 connection between host and middle-tier server, and a server-hosted applet oft oftentimes coded in Java. Now, a couple of comments. TN3270 stands for Telnet3270 and Telnet stands for Teletype Network. Today's terminal emulator still rely on the Telnet protocol, which was designed in 1969 for private networks. But TN3270 is essentially an SNA connection extended over the internet. And SNA predates and is not designed to work with the internet. As to Java applets running on terminal emulation clients and middle-tier servers, uh, Java is the second most insecure software right after Flash. Uh, Java must be frequ frequently updated to patch new security holes, and that's to the point that uh, Oracle announced early 2016 that it would be discontinuing the Java plugin because of its security issues. The reason why I made those two comments is that both TN3270 connections and distributed Java applets are the culprits for several terminal emulation security issues that we will discuss later. Now, on to the architecture of Viertel Web Access. Viertel is a thin client browser-based web access solution. With Viertel, there are no client applets, no middle-tier server, and no TN3270 connection. It's a two-tier solution with an end-to-end -end HTTP connection between client and host. Uh, instead of relying on client applets, Viertel serves standard HTML JavaScript pages with terminal emulation ergonomics, and those pages are rendered by the client's web browser. In other words, Viertel is a true thin client 3270 terminal emulation solution. Now, let's see how Viertel Web Access works. Viertel Web Access relies on a thin client web browser-based architecture, which means that the emulation program or client app that most terminal emulators rely upon is replaced by the client's web browser to which Viertel Web Access serves an HTML JavaScript web page. Application screens, such as those of CICS, IMS, TSO and other 3270 applications are served by Viertel Web Access as HTML JavaScript web pages with 3270 terminal emulation ergonomics. Those pages can be rendered by any web browser running on any web-enabled device. Consequently, Viertel Web Access works instantly with any web client available today any version of Windows, any Apple product, any tablet or mobile, mobile device. And Viertel Web Access will also work instantly with any web-enabled device that becomes available in the future uh, because those devices will always be able to render standard HTML JavaScript web pages like those generated by Viertel Web Access. Viertel Web Access's architecture makes for a very simple and instant deployment. There is nothing to install on client or middle-tier servers. Users simply point their web browser to an installation-defined URL to reach the login menu. And finally, Viertel Web Access architecture uh, simplifies support because there is nothing to support outside the mainframe. No client app, no middle-tier server, and no Java components and the support is 100% host-based. Unlike traditional terminal emulators, Viertel Web Access doesn't use middle-tier servers or Java components. It eliminates the issues typically associated with middle-tier servers, namely additional hardware, software, and support cost, additional latency, which can lead to slow response times, a potential for bottlenecks, load balancing, and scalability issues, 
additional complexity and fragility, additional components to troubleshoot when something goes wrong, and the usage of Telnet, which uh, sends unencrypted data over IP connection, hence requiring the use of a VPN, which comes with additional costs and support requirements. It also eliminates the issues typically associated with Java components, namely additional complexity and fragility caused by the sensitivity of the solutions components to Java levels, and Oracle's recent announcement that it will discontinue the support of the Java plugin. Now, let's see step by step how Virtual Web Access users connect to the 3270 applications. 3270 applications such as CICS, IMS, and TSO have a screen based user interface. The screens are served to users via VTAM SNA connections. Virtual Web Access, which runs as a started task on the mainframe, behaves as a regular VTAM terminal. But behind the VTAM relay are a protocol converter between host and web connection technologies and an IP server which manages the HTTP connections with web users. And this is how uh, Virtual generates a 3270 terminal emulation web page. Virtual Web Access inserts the 3270 data uh, coming off VTAM into predefined HTML JavaScript templates. The resulting web pages can be rendered by any web browser running on any device. Now, with a solution running on the mainframe, the question that immediately comes to mind is how much CPU will it consume and will that consumption impact the mainframe cost? The answer is that VTL Web Access consumes just about the same CPU as the TN3270 connectors it replaces. We benchmarked it to be sure. But how come? It's because the smarts of the terminal emulation or in the JavaScript HTML code of the web page. And that code runs in the VTL, in the client's uh, web browser, not on the mainframe. Uh, mainframe resources are only used to merge the data coming off VTAM into a predefined web page uh, template and to send the completed web page to the user via an HTTP server. When it comes to performance, Virtual Web Access typically outperform traditional terminal emulators because it has a very short end-to-end -end instruction path. This is achieved by running only assembler code on the host, no Java, and using no middle-tier servers. Note that multiple instances of Virtual Web Access can coexist on the same system, and that Virtual Web Access doesn't have to run in the same partition as the application it interfaces with. Instead, Virtual Web Access can run across LPOR on a single system or across systems in a Sysplex configuration. The bottom line is that Virtual Web Access is as fast and scalable as the mainframe it runs on. Now let's review the security exposures of uh, traditional terminal emulators and how Virtual Web Access avoids those exposures. The first security exposure with TN3270 connections is that they create permanently open tunnels over the internet. Tunnels which, if infiltrated, provide direct access to the host application. With TN3270 connections, the client initiates and drives the exchange with the host. Uh, this is referred to as pool or get technology and the connection is synchronous connected, which means that it remains permanently open for the duration of the session, even when inactive, which is most of the time. Whoever gains access to this open tunnel gains direct access to the host applications. Instead, Virtual relies on end-to-end -end HTTP connections. With HTTP connections, the host initiates and drives the exchange with the client and this is referred to as push technology. Uh, and the connection is asynchronous disconnected, which means that it remains closed when inactive, which is most of the time. In effect, each HTTP session is a series of discontinued data exchanges that are initiated and driven by the host. Moreover, HTTP connections don't reach the host application. Instead, they reach Virtel, which breaks and redirects the data flow. 
from SNA to HTTP and back on the host behind the protection of the host firewall. This significantly decreases the exposure to web attacks. If an attacker infiltrates the HTTP connection, uh, they will reach Viertel, not the host application. Finally, Viertel controls the exchange between clients and host applications with a proprietary token-based system. Each time Viertel sends data to a client, it sends with it a unique exchange identifying token. Upon return from the client, Viertel verified that the return token matches the token that had been sent to the client. Viertel also verified that the return data has the expected length and that it comes back from the same IP address that the outgoing data had been sent to. Those controls are designed to prevent mine in the middle and malware appending attacks, which are among the most current web attacks. The second security exposure with Viertel with the TN 3270 connections is that while TN 3270 supports SSL, terminal emulation applets oftentimes don't. So in the end, unencrypted host data would be sent over the internet through the TN3270 connection. This is why most traditional terminal emulators must run inside a VPN, which of course forces to license and support an additional software product. The HTTP connection used by Viertel on the other end send IBM SSL encrypted host data over the internet. IBM's SSL relies on ATTLS 1.1 and 1.2, which are compliant with FIPS 14002. Although it is compatible with and can run within a VPN, Viertel doesn't need a VPN for data encryption. The third security exposure with TN3270 connections is that they ignore the hidden and protected data field attributes set by the host application. TN3270 connection sends the hidden data outside the host and they don't check if the protected data comes back changed. They rely instead on the TN3270 client to implement the requested host uh, uh, data access mode. But if the 3270 connection or TN3270 client are compromised, hidden data may be exposed to unauthorized view and protected data may be exposed to unauthorized update. With TN3270 connection, the host loses control of the data access mode. Maybe some of you have heard of DEC DEF CON. It's the annual hackers conference in Las Vegas. It is quite big. Uh, 22,000 uh, people attended DEF CON 24 this past August and they were ranging from NSA experts to amateur hackers. You can find a, on YouTube DEF CON presentation from hackers who proudly explain how to attack TN3270 clients to expose hidden host data and to modify protected, protected host data. Uh, the, the threat is quite real. Instead, Viertel, which runs inside the host firewall, uh, where it is protected from web attacks, enforces the requested host data access mode. It doesn't send hidden data outside the host, and it terminates the session if protected data comes back changed by the client. With Viertel, the host retains full control of the host data access mode. The fourth security exposure with TN3270 connections is that TN3270 users are identified only once at logon and their authorizations are not memorized. When a 3270 host application crashes, the TN3270 session oftentimes stays alive. Uh, at that time, the session owner is then free to roam inside the host, for example, to access an application that they are not authorized to access. But it won't happen with Viertel. At logon, Viertel converts the user authorizations into an authorized application selection menu, which it presents to the user. 
only the application authorized for this user are listed. Those authorized applications that are available are listed with a green flag. Those authorized applications that are not available, for example, not started, are listed with a red flag. This is how users access, access their authorized application. Then Viertel memorizes the authorized application selection menu for the duration of the session, and if the host application crashes, uh, Viertel automatically returns the users to their own authorized application selection menu. This prevents users from roaming in a uh, free inside the host after a host application crash. Here's a snapshot of the application selection menu that you already saw during John's demo. It is generated dynamically based on user credential. It's served to the user after logon, memorized for duration of the session, and served again to the user if the application accessed by the user happens to crash. The fifth uh, security exposure with TN3270 connections is that they rely by default on port 23, which is a well-known port. The details of a well-known port can easily be retrieved with a port mapping program. It gives potential attackers all the information they need for an attack. The communication protocol used with the port and the operating system and application behind the port. Instead, Viertel relies on so-called user-assigned uh, registered port, which such ports are defined by the system programmer. With such port, the, the port number is unknown to outsiders, and the port details cannot be retrieved with a simple port mapping program. So potential attackers don't know the communication protocol used on the port, or the operating system and applications running behind the port, which makes it more difficult to attack the host via the Viertel assigned port. The sixth and probably the most dangerous security exposure of traditional terminal emulators is their reliance on distributed Java applets. Those standalone programs and the Java machines in which they run are sitting ducks for web attacks. They can be used as Trojan horse to gain access to host assets. Java, as I already said, is the second most notorious software when it comes to uh, security issues right after Flash. Java must be frequently updated with security patches to fend potential attacks. And if you skip uh, Java update, you are exposed to web attacks. A terminal emulation solution that relies on distributed Java applet will be only as safe as its distributed users are themselves with their own antivirus protection, Java updates, internet practices, and so on. With hundreds and uh, uh, sometimes thousands of distributed terminal emulation users, that's a scary prospect. All it takes is one compromised device to allow unauthorized access to host assets. And the host can't even ensure or verify that the distributed clients are not compromised and used for unauthorized access to host resources. In, in effect, the host has lost control of the access to its own assets. The security exposure doesn't exist with Viertel because Viertel is a true fin client. It doesn't use any client applets and it doesn't use any Java. Therefore, it is not exposed to security issues created by distributed Java applets. Viertel generates and serves new uncompromised web pages from the host where it runs behind the host uh, firewall protected from web attacks. Those web pages are rendered by the web browser inside the web browser sandbox, which is a much safer environment than the Java machines in which Java applets run. Most web browsers are automatically updated for security. It is a default setup with uh, Windows 10. The Viertel solution doesn't rely on the safe practice of its distributed users. The host retains full control of access to its own assets. And finally, the seventh security exposure of traditional terminal emulators is their support of distributed and unaudited user-developed macros. In most organizations, terminal emulation users have been able to develop along the years any macro they wanted 
without ever undergoing any security audit. Most of the time, there is no reliable inventory of those user developed macros. The macros stored on client devices are therefore sitting ducks for attacks by web hackers. They can be used as Trojan horses to gain unauthorized access to host assets. With our own prospects, we've seen logon macros used to accelerate the logon process that contain the username and password. We also have seen mass processing macros that were designed to activate thousands of host transactions from a client hosted spreadsheet. If any such macros were to fall in the wrong hands, it could spell disaster for the host. A terminal emulation solution that permits unaudited user developed client hosted macros is only as safe as its user or themselves with their own antivirus protection, internet practice, and so on. That's a scary prospect. All it takes is one compromised macro to allow unauthorized access to host assets. An unknown and unedited inventory of macros sitting on hundreds or thousands of distributed terminal emulation clients could amount to dozens or even hundreds of potential unauthorized host gateways. And the host can't ensure or even verify that the distributed macros are not compromised and used for unauthorized access to host resources. Uh, with distributed and unedited user developed macros, the host has essentially lost control of its own protection. With Virtel, the host can eliminate the security exposure by forcing all user developed macros, whether simple keystroke macros or complex scenarios, to be stored on the host. It's only optional. User developed macros may stay on the user device if users are more political, have more political clout than security auditors and host infrastructure managers. But at least this option provides the leverage needed for the host security team to enforce a systematic macro auditing and acceptance process and to keep a close eye on the macro inventory and functionalities. Uh, with Viertel, the macros can be developed and activated by users on their client device, yet stored and executed on the host inside the, the host firewall. Uh, Viertel provides the tools to prevent macros from being used as Trojan horses to gain unauthorized access to host assets. The solution security doesn't have to rely on the safe practice of hundreds or thousands of uh, distributed users. Uh, the host can retain full control of access to its own assets. In addition, Viertel's fin client architecture results in dataless clients. Uh, Viertel clears the web browser's cache at the end of a session. No data, applet, macro, or web page are left on the clients once a session ends. There is therefore no exposure for the host if a client device is lost or stolen, which is a growing issue with the deployment of mobile devices as alternatives to traditional PC workstations. Note that Viertel is compatible with any third-party IP security, proxy and jump boxes, SSO, VPN, and so on. It can be configured for terminal or printer device control. It can also be configured to work with multi-criteria or biometric authentication products. Now, on to a few case studies. Starting with uh, PSA, which is the Peugeot Citroën car manufacturer. In 2003, PSA decided to replace the costly global SNA network used to access their IMS applications with simpler and less expensive internet connections, while retaining the screen interface to avoid having to retrain the application users. With 400,000 end users accessing PSA applications 24 7 in 150 countries through locally owned and supported workstations, a terminal emulation solution relying on client host emulation programs or on middle tier servers was not an option. Instead, PSA was looking for a pure fin client solution, one that didn't rely on any client app or middle tier server, one that it could manage and support centrally on the mainframe hosting the IMS application. Although the term BYUD had not been coined yet in 2003, clearly PSA needed a global BYUD solution. Among PSA's main concerns were response time and scalability. 
uh, when they benchmarked Virtual Web Access, PSA found that it could deliver subsequent sequent, uh, response time with up to 16,000 users per Virtual product instance. Together with the possibility to run multiple Virtual product instances in parallel, it guaranteed that Virtual Web Access could scale up as PSA would deploy it worldwide to their 400,000 IMS application users. Since its deployment in 2003, Virtual Web Access has been supporting an average of 3,000 concurrent sessions with peaks of 10,000 concurrent sessions. Note that at PSA, Virtual also supports a couple of localization services. It is used to automatically select at logon uh, the language that the uh, multilingual IMS application will serve to the user. It, is also, it also automatically converts back and forth the, the double byte character of a terminal used in China, uh, Japan, Russia, and other such countries that use DBSS terminals to the single byte European character set used in PSA's IMS database. The main uh, three main takeaway from this uh, customer story are Virtual has the strength, capacity, and performance required to support very large deployments. Virtel has a long and successful track record with BYOD initiatives, and Virtel comes with integrated Unicob and uh, DBCS support. Now, on to another BYOD case study with PNV Assurance. To access PNV Assurance products, independent insurance agents had to lease dedicated Windows workstation from PNV. They didn't like having to pay a license a fee, a lease fee, for a dedicated workstation that could only be used to access PNV CICS applications and that occupied pre-shoot space uh, on their desktop. This being in Europe, many agents use Apple and even mobile devices uh, for their own business needs. But PNV, uh, PNV's terminal emulator didn't support anything other than uh, Windows workstations. For PNV, locking the workstation to prevent the installation of new products was the only way they had found to secure the access to their CICS applications and to guarantee the integrity of the workstations that they had to support remotely. Uh, switching to Virtual Web Access allowed the agents to use their own workstations and, 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 mod and mobile uh, devices to access PNV Assurance products, it eliminated the dedicated workstations and the associated fees and freed up valuable desktop space. It allowed the agents to use Apple and mobile devices instead of Windows workstations. For PNV, switching to Virtual Web Access eliminated the need to support remote I, uh, uh, IT assets. It allows them to eliminate the VPN and its cost and support requirements. Uh, it improved the relationship of PNV with its agent and made it easier to attract new agents. And this was yet another typical BYOD initiative made possible by Virtual Web Access. Uh, the three main takeaway from these customer stories are Virtual is a thin client OS-centric terminal emulation solution. It works with any web-enabled client device. It, this makes it a perfect solution in BYOD situations. Finally, on to a venerable 100-year-old uh, Pennsylvania-based insurance company that specializes in workers' comp, property, and casual, uh, casualty insurance. In 2012, this insurance had to face a long overdue modernization of its terminal emulation. Unlike other organizations that rely on web portals or GUIs to drive CICS transactions, this company still relies on screen interfaces. All day long, over a thousand employees drive every single business transaction through legacy screens. It makes terminal emulation a very crucial link in their business process. For years, the company had been relying upon one of the top tier terminal emulator, which uh, users were quite satisfied with. But the support and maintenance of that product had been dropped years ago and the old client apps didn't work with the uh, latest version of Windows or with non-Windows clients. Faced with a need to upgrade their workstations uh, and to comply with a strict directive from risk management auditors, 
they contacted the, the vendor of their emulation product to reactivate support and to upgrade the client apps. Uh, they were shocked by the price asked by the vendor, a price that we understand included a stiff penalty for having dropped support years before. Uh, they were also reluctant to embark in the development and support of 1,200 uh, new client apps. They decided to instead evaluate Viertel's FinClient browser-based 3270 terminal emulation. Uh, one of the challenges of the evaluation was to support up to six concurrent sessions per user and to manage those sessions in compliance with a special naming convention via a custom-developed Viertel script. Another challenge uh, was to thoroughly verify that the Viertel web browser uh, 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 browser-based solution supported all the emulation features that savvy uh, employees had been using for years and that the ergonomics of the new product didn't get in the way of employees' productivity and satisfaction. Viertel Web Access passed those tests with flying colors. In addition, it saved 80% in s s software licensing costs alone it resulted in drastic support reductions because there was nothing to install a support outside the, the host, no client apps and no middle tier servers. Deployment was instant. All users had to do was to point their web browsers to the installation defined URL. It allowed eliminating the session manager and the VPN and the associated licensing and support cost. And finally, it provided a future-proof em emulation solution one that will support instantly any new client technology in the future. The three main takeaways from these customer stories are Viertel instantly replaces legacy terminal emulators. It supports the last, um, uh, it supports the last uh, client te technology. It gets the approval of uh, terminal emulation power users. So why do organizations switch from their tried and true terminal emulator to Vertel Web Access? For economic reasons, to reduce the licensing fees and the total cost of ownership, to simplify support and reduce support requirements, to support any web-enabled device instantly, including mobile devices, and to support BYOD and virtual device infrastructure initiatives, and to improve security, eliminate the security threats uh, posed by uh, TN3270 connection and Java applets, uh, and uh, stop interesting hundreds or thousands of distributed clients with control of access to host assets, instead bring that control back to the host where it belongs. Thank you. Uh, we will now answer your questions. Yvonne, uh, please take it over.